Hello everyone. Welcome back. So today we are going to discuss a small topic from immunology that is organs of immune system. Okay. So we learn a lot about immunity, right, in immunology. So there are some uh, basic topics or uh, small topics on which you can get a short note like one that is organs of immune system. Okay. So we will discuss this topic today. So let's start. So this is a very simplified diagram which you can include in your answer. Okay. So you can just mark out uh, important immune system organs. Okay. So let's see. Okay. So here is tonsils and adenoids. Okay. Then lymph nodes, lymphatic vessels, thymus, then lymph node again, spleen, pears patches, appendix, bone marrow, and again, lymph nodes and lymphatic vessels. Okay, so uh, at least try to remember uh, seven, six to seven uh, organs. Okay, try to uh, mark those in your diagram and then you can further start with your answer. Okay, so let's study or let's see what all points you can include. Okay, so uh, this information I had taken from NCBI, a very good article to refer and all the credit go goes to the authors. Okay, so you can also go on this website and you can check the article. Okay, so our immune system is made up of both individual cells and proteins as well as entire organs and organ system. Correct. So the organs of the immune system, they include skin, mucous membrane, and the organs of lymphatic systems too. Okay, so we will learn about how skin and mucous membrane are considered in immune system. Okay, so let's see. So the, the, these are actually barriers. Okay, so these are the organs that functions as barrier. So your skin and mucous membranes are the first line of defense against germs entering from outside of the body. They act as physical barrier with support from the following. So first, they can secrete some antibacterial substances. Okay, so antibacterial substances can kill germs right from the start. A certain enzyme found in saliva, the airways and tear fluid, they, uh, it destroys the cell wall of bacteria. Then second is about mucus. So mucus in the bronchi helps trap many of the germs we breathe in and so they can be removed out of the airways by hair like structures called cilia. Next is about stomach acid. So even stomach acid as, acts as barrier by stopping most of the germs that enter the body in the food we eat. Okay. Then last is harmless bacteria on our skin and many of the mucous membrane in our body uh, yeah, in our body also act as part of immune system. Okay. In addition, the reflexes that cause us to cough and sneeze, they help to free our airway of germs. Okay. So this was the small uh, point I can see that you can write after the introduction of your answer like about the immune system, organs of immune system. Then you can write about the organs which help as barrier or they function as barrier. Okay. So from this, you can uh, try to write at least three points. Okay. For skin and mucous membrane. Now we will start with the actual topic. Okay. So lymphoid organs. So the lymphatic system is composed of primary lymphoid organs and secondary lymphoid organs. Okay. So primary lymph lymphoid organ. So these organs, they include bone marrow and thymus where uh, T cells, B cells, they are produced and maturation takes place. Okay. And they create special immune system cells called lymphocytes. Correct. Then second is about secondary lymphoid organs. So these organs include the lymph nodes, the spleen, the tonsil and certain tissue in various mucous membrane layer in the body. Okay. And it is in these organs where the cells of immune system, they actually perform their job or 
they do their job of fighting off germs and foreign substances okay so remember that spleen lymph nodes tonsils they are secondary lymphoid organs okay so let's move towards bone marrow and thymus which are the primary lymphoid organs so bone marrow first bone marrow is a sponge like tissue found inside the bone that's why it is known as bone marrow okay or a soft sponge like tissue so that is where most immune system cells are produced and then they multiply so these cells move to other organs and tissues through the blood and at birth many bones contain red bone marrow which actively creates immune system cells over the course of our life more and more red bone marrow turns into fatty tissue and in adulthood only a few of our bones still contains red bone marrow including the ribs breast bone and the pelvis okay so this is about the um, what we can say changes which took place or which takes place um, as we uh, grow okay as we develop okay so at birth the bone marrow is uh, or the bones they contain red bone marrow okay and throughout our life course it turns or it changes to fatty tissue okay in adulthood very few of our bones they still contain red bone marrow including ribs breast bone and pelvis okay so this was about bone marrow then next is about thymus okay so the thymus is located behind the breast bone okay above the heart so this gland like organ it reaches full maturity only in children and is then slowly transformed to fatty tissue special types of immune system cells called thymus cells lymphocytes thymus cell lymphocytes that is t cells they mature in thymus among other task these cells they coordinate in the process of the innate and adaptive immune system t cells move through the body and constantly they monitor the surfaces of all cells for changes okay so this was about thymus in case of adaptive immune system uh, you want more information then you can check my another video which is uploaded on channel okay so i will mention the link in description box you can check it out later so next is about lymph nodes the lymph nodes are small bean shaped tissues found along the lymphatic vessels okay we had seen this in the diagram okay in i guess second slide so the lymph nodes they act as filters and various immune system cells trap germs in the lymph nodes and activate the creation of special antibodies in the body in the blood so swollen and painful lymph nodes are sign that the immune system is active for example to fight against infection so that is the function of lymph nodes next is about spleen the spleen is located in the left upper abdomen beneath the diaphragm and is responsible for different kinds of jobs like it stores various immune system cells when needed they move through the blood to other organs scavenger cells which are actually phagocytes in scavenger cells means phagocytes in the spleen they act as filter for germs that get into the blood stream and next is it breaks down red blood cells that is erythrocytes it stores and breaks down platelets which means thrombocytes which are responsible for the clotting of blood among other things so there is always a lot of blood flowing through the spleen tissue at the same time this tissue is very soft and in the event of severe injury for example in an accident the spleen may rupture easily so surgery is then usually necessary because otherwise there is a danger of bleeding to death if the spleen needs to be removed completely other immune system organs can carry out its role okay so this was about spleen so next is about tonsils the tonsils are also part of the immune system because of their location at the throat and palate they can also stop 
sorry they can stop germs entering the body through the mouth or nose the tonsils also contain a lot of white blood cells which are responsible for killing germs there are different types of tonsils that are palatine tonsils then adenoid and the lingual tonsils all of these tonsillar structure together structures together are sometimes called as valdeiers ring since they form a ring around opening to the throat from the mouth and nose okay so there is also lymphatic tissue on the side of the throat which can perform the function of the palatine tonsil if they are removed next and last is about mucus membrane the ball ball plays a central role in defending the body against germ more than half of our body cells that produce antibodies are found in the bowel wall especially in the last part of the small bowel and in the appendix okay so these cells detect foreign substances and they and then they mark them and destroy them they also save information about the substances in order to be able to react more quickly the next time the large bowel also uh, contains harmless bacteria called gastrointestinal or gut flora they are healthy and non harmful so healthy gut flora makes it difficult for germs to spread and enter the body why because there is a lot of competition for nutrient access and for adhesion okay then mucus membranes they support the immune system in other parts of body such as respiratory and urinary tract and the lining of vagina the immune system cells are directly beneath the mucus membrane where they prevent bacteria and viruses from attaching okay so this was all about organs of immune system thank you for watching do like share and subscribe to my channel and also follow me on instagram and facebook by the same handle that is microbial concept and if you need videos on some other topics then don't forget to mention in comment box or you can reach me out on gmail okay you can find my gmail id in description box till then thank you